Hi, I'm Bex. I've decided to do a video blog to keep you all up to date with what's going on with my health. Um, I wasn't going to, but I decided to because I have been in the media a little bit with it lately and um, I've been getting lots of messages about it and stuff, so I just thought it'd be easier to do this, um, especially for strangers or people who you know aren't on my Facebook or um, don't ha aren't really um, have e access to that kind of information and are interested or have made donations or something want to know what's going on so I just thought we keep you guys in the loop um, <clears throat> I have actually started a YouTube channel um, called lifestyles of the chronically ill and the intention of that YouTube channel was completely different. I've started making videos for it and I'm just in the process of editing the first video um, and I've written up the second and third to shoot. Um, but it's funny because in that intro video I say this is not a day in the life sort of series and then um, I woke up this morning and I thought well actually I kind of do want to do that as well. Um, the reason why I wasn't going to do it is I thought nobody really cares about, you know, following someone else's journey. Um, they more want content that they can relate to. So that's what my intention of my original series is for, um, for people to relate to in their own way. So it's kind of, it's not really my story. It's more broad than that. Um, so this series this vlogging sort of thing um is my story and yeah so i'll take my camera around with me i'll probably shoot from my phone while i'm laying around the house or in hospital or whatever so you guys can see what's going on so today i am in what i am usually in which is what i call my uniform, <laughs> my jammies, um, just trackies and a, a jumper and I'm just snuggled up at the couch because it's like super comfy and I am very fortunate to have a nice comfy couch to lay around in all my life. Um, yeah, so where do I start? Maybe I should start with what has been going on, give a bit of a background story. Um, so, yeah, I guess I'll do that. So two and a half years ago, coming up two and a half years ago, two years, three or four months, I um, got an illness which was kind of like glandular fever, um, but it wasn't glandular fever, apparently. But I became very sick and I couldn't get out of bed and I had like flu-like symptoms and stuff. But after the flu-like symptoms went away, after about a month, um, the um, glandular, or the, sorry, the fatigue didn't go away. So I was stuck with that. And um, yeah, over two years later, I, I'm still stuck with the fatigue. But I also got really sick and ended up in hospital and they thought it was appendicitis and um, one of the doctors said to me no it's actually um, you have clearly got inflammatory bowel disease you know looking at your history and your symptoms and everything um, so they were weighing up whether to operate or not and it took them a couple of days to decide that they would operate because obviously if your appendix explodes then you're in a lot of trouble so they did um, and before they did they did a CT scan and at the time they saw a tumour they didn't tell me about this tumour until I left the hospital after they had taken my appendix out and um, they said 
we're going to need to do some testing on this tumour to see if it's active or if it's causing you any trouble. And that was a very long process, so they obviously weren't very concerned about the tumour, but I became more sick. And um, I, yeah, I lived on, it was turkey, <laughs> turkey and rice for six months, like absolutely nothing else, all that and water, which was hell. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I couldn't eat or drink anything else because I just got really sick if I did. Um, but eventually they, after a lot of testing, they came back and said, yeah, this tumour is active. It's, in, it's messing with your hormones and um, it is likely the cause of a lot of your trouble. So we've put on hold all the testing for the inflammatory bowel disease or Crohn's or um, whatever their doctor thought I had. So that's all on hold. So for now we're going to remove this tumour and see if that fixes all my troubles. Which hopefully it does. Because it's a very expensive surgery. <laughs> um, me and my family have been waiting around for the surgery but it wasn't going to happen within the public system for a very long time. So, you know, being... It, it, this illness has, like, completely disrupted our lives. Um, I've been bedridden for most of it, and it's been very hard for my husband and my son, so we got to the point where we're, like, we can't wait anymore. We need to get the surgery done, um, which is... Yeah, I, I went to a friend of mine, Nadia, and um, I was talking to her about it, and I just said, we, yeah, we've looked at private options. This is how much it'll cost. We can get it done before Christmas if we come up with that money, but we don't have that money. Um, and that's when she said, let's run a give a little page for you. And I went, <laughs> no. Uh, that's that's way too embarrassing. But I um, went home and had to think about it. And um, actually, it was because one of my friends he he had something happen. Well, his dad became chronically ill, and I well, sorry, terminally ill. Um. And the first thing that popped up into my head was to run a give a little page for him to help him to get over to Australia to help his dad. And then after I did that, I thought, well, you know, we need help too. So why not allow people to help if they want to, you know? So I went back to Nadia and I said, okay, if that's what you want to do, then um, let's do that. So she started that up for us. And um, we went along and had an appointment with the surgeon. And we now have a date for the surgery, which is in 12 sleeps, which is really exciting. And, um, yeah, I was in a Women's Day article talking about the story. Um, and since then, I woke up this morning and... I saw on the Give a Little page, someone said, I saw you on the Herald. And I looked at my husband and I was like, we're not on the Herald. Um, but then when I googled my name, I saw, well, actually, yeah, they, <laughs> we are in the Herald too now. So um, since then, I've had lots of messages about it, which is, yeah, why I decided to do this video. Um, mostly to thank everybody because um it's just been really nice <laughs> because we've suffered for the last two years in silence just yeah we we haven't really I don't know, talked to many people about it um and yeah just to have this big influx of 
lovely messages and gestures from a lot of complete strangers and well yeah people we know as well family and friends it's just yeah really it's it makes my day to to see those messages so thank you um and yeah i know that some of you are pulling money out of you know you might you, you have your own stuff going on you have your own issues we all have our own issues and your own financial goals so for you to um give to us is just so kind so we thank you so much um so yeah we have the surgery coming up and i'm so excited for that which is really weird i never thought i would be excited for someone to chop me open and take something out <laughs> but um yeah and i know that for a few months i'm going to be really sick apparently which you guys can follow if you're interested um if i feel up to holding the camera up but yeah it's just gonna it's just so nice to know that there is something on the other side and i might be able to get back to that fit person that i once was you know get back out into my gym that i used to work out and lift weights again and go for runs up up the mount and for bike rides with my son and um you know we used to go camping like every weekend so you know just to have the energy to do something like that again i'm really excited to hopefully you know not everyone does get that back after surgery but i'm hoping that that's what's going to be and to get back to work and you know and full-time work and be able to pay the mortgage properly and um, contribute financially not you know have that burden all on my husband to worry about and um, just be a better mum <laughs> yeah so I really look forward to that um, yeah so I blab it on <laughs> I don't know if there's anything else I really need to say in my first video other than to share my story, um, say thank you for all your kindness and yeah, maybe I'll share a little bit of a story about what happened this morning so um, it's quite a personal story but anyway I guess that's what these things are supposed to be about um i can't get up very early anymore if i do get up so um my son he i've been very proud he's so self-sufficient he's eight years old and he gets up and he gets him, his alarm goes off on his watch and he dresses himself for school and he um makes his own lunch and he tidies his room and then he comes in and he gives me a kiss um, to let me know he's off to school and he walks himself across the road to school so um, yeah he's been doing that for quite a while while I've been sick and last night my husband was on night shift and he did like a he was gone for 14 hours and so if my husband's on night shift then my baby gets to sleep with me my big baby <laughs> and he set his alarm off too early this morning and i couldn't get back to sleep so i got up um eventually i was oh, <laughs> got out of bed when he was about to go for school and i said to him um show me what you've got in your lunchbox you know i mean he's not he's looked after <laughs> You don't have to worry about that. There's always food in the house. Um, anyway, I opened his lunchbox and he had a muesli bar in there. And that was it. And I look over at the fruit bowl. There's fruit in the fruit bowl. And look over at the pantry. And there's bread in the pantry. And I'm like, why have you just got a muesli bar in your lunchbox? And he said to me, 
I didn't know what else to put in my lunch. And I, was, I said to him, you make your lunch every day. You know, like, it's like, if you didn't know what to put in your lunch, why didn't you come and tell me? And he looked down and he looked sad and he said to me, because I thought you were asleep. And I, um, <laughs> and I went to the bathroom and just burst into tears and I just felt like such a horrible mum. I was like, my baby can't even come to, to me and tell me that he doesn't know what to put in his lunch. Like he was just going to go to school with a muesli bar and just eat a muesli bar at school today. And I wouldn't have even known. He would have just come home and, you know, I might have got a, a message from the school saying that, oh, you're son was naughty at school today you know or he wasn't listening or whatever they probably wouldn't have known either because he goes off and sits with the other kids and yeah so yeah I just felt completely horrible about that um and yeah my husband um obviously my son thought that he was asleep too because he just finished his night shift and he didn't want to interrupt us so my husband gave me a hug and, you know, told me that I'm a great mum and he um, went and helped him to sort out his lunch and stuff. So, yeah, um, but that's just one of the realities of our life at the moment and um, I'm sharing because I feel like there are lots of other people out there who... Um, are facing chronic illness who can relate to that kind of story and um yeah but anyway um that was this morning and it's just one of the kind of issues that my family has to deal with at the moment and i look forward to this not dealing with soon um it's a lovely day in the Bay of Plenty and I might go snuggle up with my cat in the sun. He has fatigue too so we spend a lot of our lives together just snuggled up <laughs> doing not much. <laughs> um, yeah so anyway if you subscribe to this channel then I'll um, then you'll get notifications whenever I post an update. So, yeah, I'll keep you up to date with what's happening, you know, going into surgery and when I come out the other side, if I do, <laughs> um, what happens with that and throughout my recovery until you get sick of my story and <laughs> or if I, you know, just get back on with into, into life and it goes back to normal then I'll, I'll stop posting videos and um, yeah once again thank you so much for your kindness and all the support that you have shown and I hope you have a lovely day bye